Welcome to, to our Insurance Innovation Push Series. This is chapter number five uh, for, for the in total. And uh, we are happy to, to have a, a guest speaker again here with the, with the headline of risk to be or not to be. And uh, looking at uh, a lot of uh, product insurance and, and looking at details on, on that aspect. Uh, brief on Yellow May. Uh, so we are an innovative insurance consulting agency looking into the future of insurance products and processes and, and doing this globally from our aspect. But now to, to our guest uh, speaker and my, my co-partner for, for today's uh, discussion. Mindaugas, you're welcome. Go ahead and give some few e details of yourself. Yeah, hello, Yussi. Yeah, I'm Mindaugas uh, from Warrant Expert and the CEO of the company. And I'm basically uh, responsible for uh, our journey, for growth journey. Uh, we started our company in 2013. Uh, US investors had previous uh, uh, experience in this field about 10 years so, so now uh, and so we became a leader in Baltic states so it's uh, basically on the major office in Vilnius uh, now we are working in 10 countries in Europe we have our major um, services is extended warranty and purchase insurance for electronic devices and home appliances plus e-bikes and e scooters now it's uh, quite popular and it's uh, a hype in the industry to uh, ensure not only the product but uh, it's medical insurance plus third party liability um, so yeah we are uh, growing and especially now our target definitely in europe we have a joint venture company from us so we have uh, not only uh, local projects country by country but we have a uh, uh, global projects like we are working partially with Amazon. All right. OK, that sounds interesting. Definitely. And I think it's uh, you're in the if I understand correctly as well, you're kind of in the um, not in the let's say the traditional format of an insurance company. Normally that kind of insurance is being sold in, in, in that format that you are kind of a sales organization. You're more more in in between the retailers and, and and so forth and different organizations there that are doing this partially on behalf of you and then you're supporting in the background as well yeah so, so definitely it's an interesting interesting and 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 a future future uh, trend that definitely in in from our aspect that will will grow mm -hmm. um, but going to the to our first uh, discussion topic and it, this usually to all our guests so far it, this has been the most difficult one because it's kind of the broadest one Mm -hmm. and and it's good to 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 start with it so so in your mind and and from coming from your background why are insurances and insurance products different in individual countries what is yeah. the what is there yeah so it's it's always was a challenging uh, question for whole industry and uh, even when we started uh, our journey uh, um, an open new country like Latvia, which is neighbor country, and or Estonia, it was still different regulation, different culture, uh, and uh, it was a bit easier for us. We knew people from there, uh, but when when we started opening countries like Germany, Finland, or Ireland, and even UK, we, which was we don't have a license, but uh, we're still pursuing that. So it's, I think regulation is the most challenging thing because in one thing you can uh, use this freedom of service, but in reality it doesn't work like this. You can somehow leverage that, but, uh, it's, uh, but if you want to be successful uh, and partners believe in you because we are acting as an MGA and our partners are the biggest retailer uh, or e-commerce or telco chains. So you need to be credible. You need to understand how everything works. And underwriter, in most cases, in that case, 
they could be from other, different countries and to have a license there. But it doesn't mean they know everything, uh, how it's, you know, I mean, uh, they know from legal perspective, but doesn't mean it's uh, your customer journey, how you are selling, how you are cl uh, your claims administration are happening, how you are integrating with your partners. So, I mean, from reg uh, regulation is the, um, the most important uh, part. The other aspect is insurance penetration. So in, in uh, individual countries, uh, first of all, you need to check it out uh, in which industry or, you know, like our products for is PNC product from property insurance, uh, basically. And so it's uh, in in some countries, the penetration for this uh, one is quite high. So people understand how the things works and maybe um, it is an aspect that it will be easier to sell. In some cases, you know, people still considering because they already have insurance. So what was the difference? What is the additional value? But yeah, well, this aspect is quite important. And if you are looking some niche, uh, especially like I said. But, but if, if mm -hmm. looking at it, uh, this is um, before I let you uh, further is is that if you look at the products in a way mm -hmm. and, and if you if you compare, let's say, yes, someone says that banking is different in each country, but you still have an account, you still put money onto the bank, you get a loan from a bank and, and the same in, in that sense is that that uh, it, uh, and the essence of an insurance product is often it's covering a risk on behalf of the policyholder. That is kind of the essence of an insurance com uh, company and an insurance provider. Mm -hmm. Do you see that that's actually different? Or is the regulator thinking that risk is different in Finland than the risk is in, in Lithuania? Mm, I don't think so. There are some differences, for, but it's... Uh, from the policy perspective, uh, it's not so much. I mean, uh, I was in London in InsurTech conference last week, so we had this conversation about the um, policies. So in some cases, you know, insurers, especially InsurTechs, looking for a policy which is, you know, uh, maybe written in, in the form where it's easier to read, easier to understand. And I, know that in some uh, regulators he, uh, cannot confirm that this policies uh, this uh, wording they still ask this wording which is you know old school or you know regulatory so that that's the challenge but i don't think it's in all countries i mean in, in i know that in italy it's much easier for that but definitely it depends on a company if you are quite famous in that country and uh, you have a uh, power, it's much easier to convince regulatory to make changes and to approve. Uh, but yeah, in, in the beginning, it's always for uh, new companies who are coming up in the new country. Uh, it's much easier to have this um, some standard. And after that, maybe if you're quite successful, your, your concept is proven, they believe in you, so you can come up and show the policy a bit uh, different uh, form, maybe uh, easier to read, uh, easier to, or to understand or somehow, you know. OK, but, but that, that sounds kind of like I'm not saying that that is uh, in, in, in from uh, what I was listening to is that that's kind of limiting the competition in a way so that you that you when going into a new country, you are kind of put into the same bucket as someone else working in that industry the specific product area for example is do you feel that that's actually driven by the well and i know that it's kind of driven by the regulation but but in the end of the day the risk is the same the risk is the same but mm -hmm. might be interpreted if i understand correctly from you it's interpreted slightly differently in individual countries even though it's same risk same uh it might be the same phone model that you're insuring in Lithuania or you're insuring it in Latvia, but still 
there's uh, the interpretation how do you need to do this is slightly different at least from from the regulative point of perspective it's slightly different but no no major the differences even in us or or, or in europe but yeah europe is more complicated this this cultural thing so yes. not, okay. even regulatory is more about uh, how people doesn't matter if we are from regulatory or we are from uh, service centers or it's an end customer how they understand what is especially like in Nordic countries they have their own view yeah. you know or UK it's like this this type of the okay. services no, or I think it's yeah I think it's a fair point so moving on um so the, I think definitely you you are in the, in the in the area where basically there's a lot of discussion and, and how this will look like in the future, but embedding insurance products to, to existing uh, uh, flows of, of purchasing. But if you look at um, how, what does it actually kind of, when you embed a product um, and the risk of an insurance product into a, a purchasing uh, process, for example, how, what what is kind of the impact uh, there? What kind of impacts do you get out from this process of uh, putting a risk into of for example buying a, a mobile phone, but you add in the risk factor there? What does mm -hmm. it actually correlate? What comes out from it? Yeah, I think it's for from end consumer uh, perspective, it's much easier to understand what you will get because you know it's a perspective that you are buying like mobile phone uh, uh you know what is the risks for mobile phone so it can crash it can be uh stolen uh so and it's like uh embedding and we are in this industry from the beginning in my in most of the cases so it was maybe the embedding in that particular time it was a bit different now it's 2.0 a bit uh, different versions of that but yeah so uh, and i think telco companies basically uh, was uh, uh, pushing this embedding for um, different type of services it was much easier monthly payments or in some cases it be became subscription payments uh, so we uh, so we believe in that uh, that risk uh, for particular uh, device or product, it's much easier to understand for the customer. So he know what he will get, uh, and it's much easier to um, sell in that particular moment because after that, you know, you need to push to buy the insurance, and it's all the insurance sector is more about not just educating, but it's more a lot of education happening but still it's you need to sell it's not happening like people are choosing by themselves especially in digital uh, uh channels like e-commerce platforms you know still the rates are quite low and doesn't matter which is or it's product insurance or it's a different type of insurance still you need to sell well if 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 looking at that process where do you see that that happens if it's now 2.0 what will be there in 2.5 or 3.0? What what kind of uh, what would you? How would you uh, let's say either improve or develop further the, the 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 interaction there? What what would you see if you would if you would be given all free hands all nowadays chat GPT functionality to everything what what is being done or artificial intelligence from the data mm -hmm. aspects. What would you do? How how would it look like? So yeah, you know, previously it was you know this 1.0. It's it was just um, it was called it it wasn't calling and embedding. It was you know part of it bundling, and this 2.0 involves uh, heavily technology, but still technology yeah. evolves as Chat GPT could be uh will, could help but <clears throat> a lot of uh huge companies 
which is investing in this processes, including ChatGPT or something similar, uh, uh, they are still behind of this and uh, people involvement, this hybrid model still works in 2.0. But in further, we are looking definitely, um, I mean, AI uh, will be uh, handling all the sales process. I'm not saying that it will be 100 percent, but uh, yeah, it's the super apps, platforms. Uh, we are selling, uh, you know, a lot of products and services, uh, and especially when you are using your subscription models for, um, you know, streaming uh, or something else. So it will be included, and it will. The most important part that uh, data analysis will be more, more much faster. So they uh, predict uh, your questions, what is important for you. Uh, and uh, this process will be much easier. And in some cases for some industries which uh, invest it now and collect data and already uh, using as a D2C channel, because who is, you know, now it's a uh, different, uh, there are duties, D2C channels, others are more through partners and embedding in some in the between. Later on, I, I think it's who has the experience, data, right people and AIs, which is, you know, already evolved. Uh, they will do this work much faster, more, much efficient. Uh, and uh, I believe especially in Europe where the different languages uh, and um, different um, maybe approach, cultural approach. So you need to, uh, if you want to be successful, you know, like in most of European countries, uh, definitely you need to involve technology and AI, so it will be much easier to sell, and, and especially in these huge platforms. If, if, if you look at it, uh, but if you look at it now from the, from the from the buyer's perspective, so in this case, who who buys the product in in that embedded process, even nowadays, mm -hmm. what do you see the role there? Kind of because I know that the the more engaged buyers, in a way, you get, the more convinced they will be the ones who buy the product from you also in the future. What 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 do you look at the, if you look at the look at the existing specifications and then moving further with with artificial intelligence what what do you see how do you see kind of the interaction with the buyer because they they are obviously if looking they will buy their phone or they buy their laptop or they buy their uh, their uh, goods and then they interact with it but but obviously what is there happening in the background so kind of where does this move? What is the correlation? What does the end user, what end user can has as an impact in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think education uh, is very important. And so you can do it uh, uh, on the uh, process when you are selling, uh, but it's much efficient if you are educating uh, or advertising in uh, in the background. So we are already getting some inf information uh, because we are already thinking to buy something and, you know, we're already looking for that. So it's not social networks could be involved. And I know that it's already happening and some companies utilizing it quite efficient. Uh, but uh, I think from that perspective and customer will be more happy to make decisions if he gets uh, more information because you know if you want to buy something it's an emotional thing in most of the cases uh, so you are ready for that you check the information but and services just pop up it's you know you can be convinced in quite fast way uh, and especially in uh, when you are buying digital not uh, in a retail shop or somewhere so it's a bit different process so i think from the, that point of view it's quite important uh, this um, more 
So and educating the, the end user, what, what do you see as an aspect? Because um, I know that people are, are individuals and they, they want also individual services. Do you see that there will be in the future, I, I have more, well, it, either it is as a recommendation that what kind of a product I should buy, or do you see even that? Because uh, what what I'm looking into as well, and and what what can, uh, what intrigues me is that can you actually incorporate kind of underwriting into that process? If if you look at it, kind of that, do you see that that happening? Kind of like that you actually modify the product in more detail in in the future in that yeah, process. Yeah, definitely. Well. Yeah, I mean, even you mentioned about the underwriting. Uh, when technology is in, involved and the right underwriters, uh, or, you know, they have uh, some experience in that. So they definitely it will be much easier. Uh, you can get. Hmm? Yeah. I thought maybe <laughs> I was frozen, but no, I was I was frozen. Sorry. Now I'm back. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm not sure. Have you heard everything what I told? But, uh, well, I, I left the, was left into the into the underwriters part basically, so that there's now still physical underwriters. But then, what happens in the future? Yeah, so I think technology evolves. Uh, so uh, there are, I mean, three parts, important parts. So it's uh, technology which you know evolves together with AI uh, mm -hmm. and gets all the information from underwriting uh, underwriter which is capable to make it happen and so in underwriting from underwriting perspective even the technology needs to be involved and uh, definitely the all the processes happen uh, uh, quite smoothly so and this all the AI who collecting all the information and uh, on the behavior, on the customer, uh, so he can predict uh, and he can customize product much faster. And I mean, in a second, sometimes, okay, it could be in a, a 10 seconds, 15 seconds, because the conversation uh, could be, because yeah, now just, everybody just... is writing mostly. Mm. And in the future, everybody will talk. And yeah. that's we talking now, so it will be much easier and it's like yeah, right. it, it can be kind of like what comes to my mind, for example, even <clears throat> what, what I would. I would definitely do is that if I'm buying a product that, OK, this is a product for my daughter, so I will not buy the 900 euros phone it, instead of I buy this 120 euros phone, but still it's kind of like it comes to 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 the usage of my daughter and then the risk of of are, are different potentially than than I would be the one who uses the phone. I think that's one of the the key aspects as well. Uh, what comes yeah, yeah, to my mind there in, in regards of kind of what are the demands of of this policy or or then looking into also that what what different risks there are, for example, in in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so from risk perspective, uh, it's a uh, best, especially in the embedded. That's the case. You can add more risks, or it could become the services more broader. I mean, what you are buying, you can add very easily some uh, additional uh, risks. It's not just now you are buying, and maybe you can add something, but it's not a very smooth process in most of the yeah. cases. But, uh, yeah. In the future, in the Five years. I mean, perspective yet. It will be. It it's already evolving. It will be much yeah. easier. Yeah. So so moving next. Sorry that I was a minute away there. But then then looking into well, how if you look at, um, you can either reflect yourself as a company, or then you can reflect the 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 the, the insurance segment, for example, where you are. That okay. How innovative are you from one to ten? If if you look at it. Uh, being being honest there. <laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, I will give us five. Uh, we are on the way for innovation. Uh, but still, we are in the insurance industry. We have uh, challenges there. So in some cases, uh, we are 
prioritizing things. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's very important part and we are before we will uh, we can g give us a better uh, for, for this innovation. I think it's not it's not very easy part. Either you need to uh, involve companies who is uh, already in this process for the innovation and it helps you on this way to track because it's like innovating uh, only for one, two years um, in the future, it doesn't help you need if you want to be successful, especially with uh, AI solutions or some quite innovations, you, can, you need to think like five years in the future. Uh, and because it's huge investments, uh, uh, it takes time. Uh, reorganize your organization, how you're collecting data, how you are using data, you convince your underwriter or, you know, you need to find an underwriter who, be, who who sees the same way. So, yeah, so from yeah, five, maybe four to five. And I mean, I see that a lot of opportunities there, but our priorities in some cases more innovating on the products, not on the whole process. Yeah, OK, all right. Well, even if you if you look at the, and I think you already touched upon the topic there, kind of what innovation means for you as well. I think that's kind of like in 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 short term now it's more look potentially looking at products in a, or product innovation within the within the framework where you are working now and kind of looking at it from that perspective. Um, but if if looking at and then in in uh, summing it up a bit uh, towards we are closing to the end, how would you look like? Uh, wh where do you see that? OK, where where the business or the insurance segment where you are working, where is it in five years time? What do you see there? Because it's I think 10 years is a bit far. I think in, mm -hmm. even in five years, there would be a lot of development. Where do you see that that's it's going on? I think that's interesting to to hear. Yeah, so as I said previously, uh, technology definitely it will be uh, involved more heavily. Uh, like now, a lot of companies still using their uh, systems which we are created by themselves or which we are renting. And what I saw in the London last uh, uh, conference last week, it was uh, clear that technology AI is becoming a part of insurance and it's really creating value and now it's the and you know the companies evolved and then we really invested in this technologies and we see funds beliefs in that and uh, in giving this uh, investment so it's they are much faster can you know uh, invest and to, to find a way where the real uh, value is coming. So I, I believe that this, now we still are in this more, uh, not a, there is a, you know, a still old way how everybody sell is we are going forward to hybrid model. And after five years, I believe we will we'll be uh, more from hybrid to digital model. Uh, because it will be more efficient um, uh, and uh, um, new generation definitely will be a bigger portion of buyers. So that, that's the case that uh, technology-driven companies uh, will be more successful if they will uh, learn how the model works now and how uh, and where we, can, we need to invest and what data we need to collect and what people we need to involve for that. So we need to learn from the companies who's in the full digital model now, maybe some of them all successful, maybe some of them still not successful, but we need to learn from them and go uh, in that way. Okay. Um, and then my my last question is is looking into if if you look at it for the for the buyers of the products uh, and i know that there's where do you see kind of them how they are being served 
and now I know that there's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, the the discussion on on how how they find products or how they buy them as well, but mm -hmm. but how they will be served in five years time. Yeah, the, I think that's important part. Now uh, this uh, customer journey, uh, especially in insurance, uh, it's uh, become. Uh, we need to look for the leaders, and I think in some way, fintech uh, evolved faster in this uh, way. So we need to um, serve, especially in this claims process. When is happening? How to register? How to get notifications? All the how the process all uh, happening because all the customer wants, you know, this uh, com uh, transparent communication. So fast communication. We don't want to spend a lot of time for that, uh, and want to get uh, uh, what to say to know. What is the timeline and what is that? Well, or how they are reinstated kind of to the same uh, same place where they were before something happened, I think. Yeah, yeah. So and already what we can, you know, some of Gen, Gen Z already, you know, are really uh, showing us what is important for them. Uh, and uh, this digitalization definitely will help us for that and even not I'm not saying that you need to create everything by yourself you can use the platforms which is you know created which you know, maybe uh, some industries already successfully you know using that so i think mm -hmm. is yeah. to adapt and to get what is in the market it will be in some cases much uh, faster decision because to invest time and money it's you need to uh, make a decision. I either you have time for that, uh, or you you just customizing what is in the market and uh, and just and you are focusing more on your customers, not on your organization on, on, uh, on volume. Or IT infrastructures in a way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah sometimes companies more uh, focused on what they are doing by themselves. But how is the reflecting for the end customers or for the yeah. partners? Doesn't mean <laughs> it's the same, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Um, I think if you would, uh, then then this is a question, and then 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 I, I can can give you a reflection. Where, if you would look into next, what are you looking as a next example of innovation? Well, what what would be a, a detail or or a big scope? What what would you look at uh, from the from the innovation space? What would be there? You mean from our organization? Yeah, where we will planning to innovate. I mean, yeah. which is yeah. So um, customer journey, how okay. we are, uh, uh, how we are really uh, utilizing. Uh, and uh, interacting, maybe not uh, interacting with our customers. Okay, so, you know, it's, we have a lot of data. We have a lot of customers, more than a half a million. So it's very important for us to interact with the customers. They're not. I'm not saying only to, on the cross selling and up selling. It's uh, but educating and uh, becoming part of them because they are, you know, some of our customers buying a free for policies have already or more so you know that's important to that, uh, this communication with the customers giving getting the feedbacks understanding what's uh, what is uh, important for them uh, it will lead our innovation from there so it's uh, so we will invest in this type of technologies uh, people, who is, understands that, who yep. already, you know, has experience. Very good. Excellent. Sounds good. Sounds good for the for the for the policyholders. So thank you. Thank you, Midagos, for the for the for the discussion. Lovely to have you here today. 
and and hopefully hopefully for our listeners as well and then who will look at the recording they will they will get some more insights from or towards i think we were in a very specific area i think that's uh, very very cool to to hear from from a detail level that we were could well, i would say that's the that's uh, definitely value for for the people there so thank you for for, thank for you, this Mr. time Thank you and and have a lovely day to to you and to all all others who are listening to the recording afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, thank bye you. bye. Have a good day everybody. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye bye. Bye.